You're watching From Glory to Glory, Channel 343, TVN in Africa. You need to dream and dream big. Don't take a small anyana thing and make it a dream. Especially something that you see that you can do with your own resources. Don't make it a dream. Just do it if you have the ability and strength to do it. Don't even make it a goal. Just wake up and do it because you have what it takes. But if something scares you, Well, this morning, I just want to talk to you under the very same theme, but on the subject, mastering your dream. Mastering your dream. Say these words after me. I am a master of my own dream. Turn with me to the book of Genesis chapter number 37. It would be an injustice to continue talking about dreams and we don't you know, focus on Joseph. Amen. From verse number 18, the Bible says, now when they saw him afar off, talking about Joseph, even before he came near them, they conspired against him to kill him. Then they said to one another, look, this dreamer is coming. Come, therefore, let us now kill him and cast him into some pit. And we shall say, some wild beast has devoured him and we shall see what will become of his dreams. We shall see what will become of his dreams. Masimbulala in that pit. We shall see what will come, what will become of his dreams. Let's go now to 2 Kings chapter 7. 2 Kings chapter 7. And I'm going to read from verse number 1. Are you there? Are you there? The Bible says, Then Elisha said, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Tomorrow, about this time, a seer of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel and two seers of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. So an officer on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Look, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, could this thing be? The, the, the message version puts it this way. You expect us to believe that doors opening in the sky and food tumbling out. The New Living Translation puts it this way. That couldn't happen even if the Lord opened the windows of heaven. And the prophet replied and said, in fact, tell your neighbor and say, in fact, You shall see it with your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. In fact, you shall see it with your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. Bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, Dreams 
are not necessarily random selfish desires or selfish ambitions that we sometimes pursue out of covetousness, seeing your friend buying something or doing something and all of a sudden you just so happened to have a dream that is similar to the one that your friend is living. Dreams are not those Kim Kardashian inspired kind of desires. Something that you saw on TV and all of a sudden you wanted to have it. James 4 verse 3 says, you ask and do not receive. And this is the reason why many of us today are frustrated and we think our prayers are not being answered. The Bible answers this question very simply. It says, you ask and do not receive because you ask amiss. And what is to ask amiss? He continues to explain. He says, that you may spend it on your pleasures. Dreams are not just so that you can just have a nice time. Just so that you can be, you know, park big cars in your yard, big house, build big houses. Yes, it includes that. But it's not just so that you can just live that life. But dreams are to fulfill purpose. They are to fulfill a purpose for which God has created you for. Are we together, Bazalwan? Hebrews 13 verse 5, the Bible says, let your conduct be without covetousness. Covetousness. Allow other people to inspire you, but do not covet what they have or what the Lord has given them until you have fully and uh, uh, surrendered your life to God and God is the one who is inspiring you. But this scripture continues to say, be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be content. It's almost the same thought that we spoke about last week that sometimes people spend a lot of time focusing on what they don't have while they overlook what God has already given them. And people who do that are people who are not content with what God has already given them. Amen. So do not just covet things in life. Do not just co co covet things. And I'm just going to show you shortly how can you know for sure that these desires that you have, they are genuinely from God and not out of covetousness. Because these days we have a problem with people who are chasing after dreams, not because God has said anything about, uh, uh, I mean, to them about those dreams, but simply because they are just covetous people. They, they are full of competition. They want to be better than their friends. They cannot celebrate their friends or their cousins. There are many people today, they have sleepless nights. Ufuni Kavel again, not because you are Tanda. It's because you saw your friend wearing one. It has got nothing to do with what you love. People today do things for the sake of Instagram, not because they want to be fulfilled by those things. You went to Sentin City, not because you wanted to go, go to Sentin City, but simply because you wanted to have a picture that you can post on Instagram. These things don't fulfill you, but you do them for, that is covetousness. It has got nothing to do with pursuing dreams. It is co covetousness full of competition. And do you want God to sit in heaven and entertain such requests that are coming to him each and every day? Because if, when we ask for things to God, he does not look necessarily at the request. He looks at the heart. So by the time you ask, ask yourself this one question. What is my motive? Why do I want to have this car? It would be very silly of me to start praying about, uh, and I'm saying me deliberately, I'm making an example hypothetically speaking because I don't want to use anybody here so that people are not going to be offended, right? But it would be very silly of me while I'm earning 2,000 rands per month 
and I'm, be, I'm saying I'm believing God for a Range Rover. Why? One full tank is half your salary. You will be squandering, like Elder John was saying, you'll squander your salary and you'll be complaining about tithing because you took half of your salary and put one full tank on it. There's nothing wrong with starting by believing. Why, why would I believe God for a private jet where I am now? Why? 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 There will be a time when I can believe God for a private jet, but not now. Amen. It would be very silly of me to do that. Amen. I know I'm preaching. Hallelujah. It would be very silly. So allow God to work in your heart to take you through all the necessary processes. Let him be the one who puts desires that are going to take you from glory to glory, from strength to strength, from faith to faith. Don't stress yourself trying to prove a point to somebody. You will die of heart attack. This, this social media these days is giving us problems. People will, will, will do whatever it takes. Go to some extent just so that they can post something on Instagram. You can be shocked how some of us live our lives. But we don't put it on Instagram. And the ones who are putting on Instagram, oh, a lot of fake and lies, pretense, jealousy, pride, competition. Other posts are inspired by other posts. Uh -huh. Other posts are inspired by other posts. You yourself know you were not going to post that thing if you did not see somebody else's post so actually it's a reply situation right now why and then when people begin to interfere in your business you are the one who's complaining but you are the one who has opened, you have opened the world. You have, you have opened a door to the whole world to say, interfere in my business. Look at how I think. Look at how petty I can be sometimes. Situation right now. For what? Situation, who said we are interested in your situations? You will be shocked and some, and some, at, at some other people's situations. Real situations are there. Hallelujah. But the dreams that we are talking about are those desires that are put by God in our hearts. Listen to this carefully. As we delight ourselves in him. The Bible says in Psalm 37 verse 4, delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. I said this during our Bible study that sometimes people ask me, how do I know if something is from God or not? How do I know my purpose or my calling? I said, focus on this one thing and one thing only. Delight yourself in the Lord. Focus on God. Give yourself fully. Do not make God second or third or fourth priority in your life. Put God first and you will see God imparting things that are correct for you, proper for you. And once you receive that thing, you will, you will get that sense that you don't have to prove a point to anybody concerning what you feel and what you desire in your heart but if something drives you to compete with your friend it is not from God if something drives you to just send a statement about because what God has given you you even you yourself you know that you 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 you, you cannot brag about this thing because you don't have what it takes to do it or to achieve it as a matter of fact the blessing from God humbles you it keeps you silent because you know what's there to boast about? What's there to brag about? But if it makes you pompous, it feeds your ego. All of a sudden, you feel like you are better than everybody else. Be careful. 
Delight yourself in the Lord. Give yourself fully. Serve God. Pray to God. Worship God. And God will begin to change your, your priorities. God will work in your heart. God will just put things at the right time for you to desire. You're watching From Glory to Glory. Channel 343 TBN in Africa. Butlang Christian Center presents our online store that's easy and simple to use. Now you can buy your own copies of the powerful messages preached at BCC. To access our online store, simply visit our website, select the item you want to buy, view it and then check out. Or create an account, pay and download your MP3s, MP4s and eBooks. You can now purchase the latest sermons on MP3 or DVDs, or you can buy any of the various books available in our collections. We have books such as I Believe and The Twelve Biblical Benefits of Tithing. The anointed messages preached at BCC are now simply a click away. So don't delay. You can add recent messages to your collection today. There are also monthly specials and combos available. So get yours now. Simply visit our website at www.butlingcc.org and be blessed. Looking for new ways to stay in touch? The BCC app is just what you need. You can download the app to watch and listen to the latest sermons. The app will keep you updated with the latest news and events at BCC. You can also easily access the daily devotions to build your spirit at the touch of a button. Be inspired and buy books and messages through the app online. Stay connected with us and download the BCC app via the App Store or Google Play. Get yours now. Woodland Christian Center presents new teaching titles that will change your life. As long as you've got the presence of God upon your life, it means it is enough for God to birth something miraculous in your life. You cannot separate the supernatural or the miraculous from Christianity. If we deny the supernatural, we deny the existence of God. God's miracles in our lives reinforces our faith in Him. Not all miracles are God's miracles. No matter how wise you can think you are, but whenever the word is being preached, the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ is being preached, you can never be able to understand it, believe it and receive it without the help of the Holy Spirit. We need to acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit upon our lives because he was given for a purpose. God always responds to our needs through his supernatural acts. So, if you are living your life as a believer, only depending on the tangible things, only believing in the natural, in what you see, you cannot operate in faith, which is required for a miracle. These titles are available as DVD, MP3, and MP4 formats. Get yours now. You're watching From Glory to Glory, Channel 343 TBN in Africa. Brothers and sisters, dreams are possible. They don't have to remain as dreams, but God can make them to become possible in your lives. Because God wants our dreams to come true. He wants us to realize that they can be made possible, especially our God-given dreams like we have said. No matter how big they are, we just need to allow him, God, to make them possible by simply showing us certain biblical principles for us to apply in our lives so that those dreams can be made possible in our lives. So that even we ourselves cannot wake, work against ourselves and end up sabotaging the very same dreams that we want for them to be fulfilled in our lives. That's why God is challenging us the way that he is now because he wants to show us the things that we can practically do in our lives so that our, so that our dreams can be made possible. Are we together, Bazalwan? Dreams are possible not because we are sufficient of ourselves, 
to fulfill those dreams as human beings. But because God is the one who, enab who enables us to fulfill them by his grace. The Bible says, for with God, nothing is impossible. So when we declare that dreams are possible, it is not because there is something in our lives. But it is simply because we are putting our trust and faith in God, that God can make this dream possible. Because dreams are scary. That's why I say, you need to dream and dream big. Don't take a small anyana thing and make it a dream. Especially something that you see that you can do with your own resources. Don't make it a dream. Just do it if you have the ability and strength to do it. Don't even make it a goal. Just wake up and do it because you have what it takes. But if something scares you, something is so big, you realize that there is no salary of yours that can be able to finance it. There is no mind of yours or brains of yours. But each time you look at this thing, you can see that it is beyond your power your capacity you might be having yourself a dream right there that is the one that will that will take heaven to fulfill it it will take God himself amen so we are declaring in our lives that all things are possible with God amen second Corinthians 3 verse 5 Paul said not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves but our sufficiency is from God when that devil is busy threatening you and telling you that you are not going to achieve those goals you are not going to see that 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 dream becoming a possibility in your life you better tell him that devil you cannot look at my education you cannot look at my background you cannot look at my salary because my sufficiency is not from me. I am not the source, but my sufficiency is from God. As soon as the devil sees that you are looking up to God to fulfill that dream, that is the only way you can chase him away from your life. That is the only way you can cause him to, to shake in his boots and to realize that something great is going to happen in your life. Are we together, Bazalwan? Know that anything that you are going to ever do or achieve through your dreams in this life, it is by the grace of God. No matter how educated you are, no matter how connected you are, no matter how rich you are, but if a dream is from God, and as a matter of fact, if in everything that you have experienced or achieved thus far in life, know that it is by the grace of God. It was Paul who said, by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. That's why the Bible says it is not by power, it is not by might, but it is by my spirit, says the Lord. So the grace of God that is upon us. So when God gives you a dream, he is going to give you the grace to be able to fulfill it. Amen. So that when you see it being fulfilled in your life, you will know that it is not you, but his grace that is at work in your life. Amen. It was Harriet Tubman who said, every great dream begins with a dreamer just want to spend few minutes on this and then we are going to close amen every great dream begins with a dreamer for certain things to be accomplished in life or in this world god will always call a man or a woman give them a dream and grant them the grace to fulfill that particular dream are we together Bazalwan? That dream can be in a form of a ministry and when I say ministry, I include church or any other thing that we do for God in his kingdom. Are we together? It can be a particular kind of a business that God puts a desire for in your heart. It can be pursuing a certain career. You need to understand that when God gives you a dream, it is not just about you, but the your dream is always connected to a bigger picture. There is something greater that God wants to do, but he wants you to participate in that, in the fulfillment of that great picture. Are we together, Bazalwan? God, for an example, had great plans with the nation of Israel. But for those plans to be accomplished, he had to give Joseph a dream. 
So that that dream will begin to shape his life, direct his paths, so that Joseph can play a role in fulfilling the bigger dream that God had with the children of Israel. Are we together, Bazalwan? Joseph did not ask for that dream. Joseph did not insist that he wanted that dream. He just so happened to wake up with that kind of a dream and he was persecuted for it. He never asked for it, Bazalwan. But it took God to just give him a dream. So you need to know that God is the one who decides what kind of a dream can you pursue in your life. It is not going to be up to you, but it is going to be God. Because sometimes we can ask things that are way smaller or way lesser than what God has originally planned for us. The things that you can desire for yourself, sometimes they can be so little, so small. That's why we need God to challenge us. The Bible says he is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we can ever ask or think. I would be fine with just a small Indiana house, one car, somewhere in some little corner. But God always challenges us to think bigger than, than, than how we have thought before. God always, God always challenges us to believe him for greater things. Amen. We are so grateful. We are so grateful to God. But you need to realize that dreamers are called by God. So God puts a dream in the heart of a dreamer. He calls them to achieve something bigger than them. So dreamers, because of this calling, are going to be wired in a certain way. They are going to carry a particular kind of a DNA. Dreamers are not normal people. They are not ordinary people. They are extraordinary people, Bazalwan. Amen. So they, were, they are going to be wired in a particular way because you need to understand as a side as a side step let me just throw this this thought in there there are many people out there simply because we are talking about the you know the language of dreaming and how you need to associate yourself with big thinkers and but in this world here's the reality that we also have there are other people out there <laughs> who are great pretenders because in life in general whether it's in business in marriage, friendship, church, wherever. The most dangerous person you can ever walk with in your life is a person without a dream. To glory, from power to power, from strength to strength, I'll never be.